Hey everyone, thanks for joining of course back here with Bill. Got an exciting video. We're gonna dive a little into R&D, some robots, what goes in the new versions. Got a lot of questions, so have a few on the side and we'll dive into that today. But first things first, Bill, how are you? I'm doing all right, doing okay. Changing the world one robot at a time. Or actually this morning, three. Uh, we just got uh, three sold to a new client and we got a lot more good stuff brewing. So gonna be an exciting year. Yeah. Hey, that's one of my questions who we'll get into, but yeah, pretty cool biotech clients. Uh, you're kind of seeing a lot of mix uh, of different types of clients in your guys' portfolio, but um, look, let's, let's start on R and D. I mean, uh, you know, general speaking, high level, you know, people asking, you know, is there new robots coming? What goes in the new versions? Someone gave the analogy of, is it like an iPhone where the new version comes out every year? Uh, you know, curious if you want to kind of take any of those questions. Yeah, sure. From there. Um, so we do a lot of R and D, mostly D less R. Uh, said differently, unless we can ship it in three, six, nine, twelve, you know, max fifteen months, we're probably not working on it. Uh, our clients have issues, and we're not doing science projects here, so we need to release stuff. Uh, we release new software probably every two weeks. Uh, new hardware every few months. Uh, we're not on the normal iPhone 11, 12, kind of 13 schedule. Um, a lot of the technology changes uh, dramatically. Uh, sometimes there are you know client feedback things that we need to address. Uh, lately, we've been really focused on uh, a few things. One, now that we've operated probably close to a million and a half hours out in the field, uh, we've learned a lot, and so we're in the process of releasing uh, this year the uh, fifth generation uh, K5, and I always screw this up, so th this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, this takes all the learnings from all these years of being out in the field through summers and winters and making a bunch of upgrades that uh, will make it easier to uh, operate out in the field. Uh, possibly in a sometimes slightly more difficult uh, locations, uh, but also make it easier to service and assemble. Uh, this one will probably take us 80% less assembly hours uh, to get out the door, which is a you know huge, huge step change. Uh, and also most importantly, make sure that we can service it easily. Uh, you, uh, if you got a complicated product that's not easy to service, you know, you go fix one thing, then you go break two other things is, you know, not, not a good model. So we're, uh, we're working on that. And we've also said that we're going to be releasing a, a smaller version of the K1, uh, the stationary one. Uh, so that's also on track for, uh, for later this year. Uh, so a couple of products there. And then lastly, a lot of internal blocking and tackling. Um, let's see, how do I explain this? So it's easier when you have you know, a, a small amount of teammates and a small amount of clients, uh, a lot of stuff don't re doesn't require normal technical or you know, corporate processes or whatever. But when you start getting, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, you know, plus clients uh, into the hundreds and what have you, you can't do what you were doing before, right? The way you release code, the way you build a machine, um, the way the team communicates to a client, uh, you actually start needing to put you know some processes in place and we're spending a lot of time doing that uh because you know it's a good problem to have the company's growing right yeah no and interesting you say kind of focusing a lot more on the the development side of you know than research um to put it in perspective you know a lot of people kind of compare actually you know what you guys are doing and the learning the robots have versus you know tesla cars learning driving on the road um would you say that's kind of like a fair analogy and then on that point uh you know talk to me a little bit more about these like every two week updates are, are those taking a lot of the you know, information and then, hey, small upgrade here. We saw this kind of, you know, bug or this benefit we can add in. Um, if you don't mind diving into that. Uh, yeah, so uh, some of the over-the-air updates, no different than and then Tesla, are in genuine bugs like, hey, we figured out why this, you know, at this uh, all across the fleet, this one little bug keeps happening, right? Um, sometimes it's deployment specific. At this particular client, we're having difficulty at this particular location and there's some cellular issue or whatever it might be. Uh, in some cases, it might be a, a new feature for the service team to be able to uh, better address an issue. Or we're about to push uh, 
a new set of hardware and obviously the, the software needs to, to, to follow or be uh, coincident. It's, it's all the above. Um, it's in some cases, it might be a new feature upgrade for the, for the client. Hey, we can do X now, uh, or something they ask, ask for. Uh, so it, it really, it varies. And again, it changes the organization, right? If you have five robots and like, they're all kind of the same, um, and you know exactly what's going on with every single one of them. Uh, in our case, when you have so many of them out there in the field across the entire country, you need to start thinking like bigger scope of, of things and how to release stuff and on a more uh, systematic uh, kind of cycle. Yeah. So a lot of blocking and tackling, as I like to say. Pretty cool that the, depending on you know where the robot is, there might be something very unique to that you know one location that you guys can give updates for. Uh, no, cool. no different than Tesla. I mean, you you end up with a lot of edge cases or this particular scenario at this angle. The sun was at this thing. You know, something happened. Like in a lot of cases, we end up with weird situations as well, and that's why we've been. Um, you can't build this stuff in a vacuum or in a laboratory. And I think Tesla's proven that you need, you know, in their case, billions of miles uh, to actually get the algorithms to get better and better and better and better. And without that data, you're not going to be able to, to do that. Uh, in some cases, it's, you know, configuration issues and stuff that the client doesn't need to see or, uh, or massive cost reduction. Like, Hey, we used to do the cellular strategy this way. Remember, these machines generate a massive amount of data. And you don't want to see your cell phone bill, by the way. Um, and then we, you know, uh, working with our, our awesome and trusted suppliers and vendors, we start figuring out, hey, what if we were able to consolidate this over here? What if we put in some additional different tools? And this is all blind. The, the client doesn't need to see this, but we're, you know, constantly wanting to reduce the cost, the operating costs. Um, because it's a service. I, I think a lot of investors, you know, how much does a machine cost to build? And sure, that's important, the actual bill of material. Um, but since most of these machines are out there for, you know, four, five, six years, it's important to really focus on the operating costs because the operating costs, the, the maintenance, the service and everything else can most often exceed the amount of the cost of the actual robot. Uh, so that's why needing to look at it systemically across the the life cycles uh, sometimes more important than than the actual unit price unit yeah. cost I should say. No, interesting. Well, a good uh, I think a good high level overview of kind of you know what you guys are doing on the R and D front and a lot of the kind of unique examples you're already alluding to. Um, question I figured it was kind of perfect for for this, uh, and you're already chatting about it kinda. Um, how many robots do we have in the field today? And um, you know, someone else asked also across how many customers. Um, are we able to to give that kind of answer, or generally? Um, sure. We, obviously, we'll refer everyone to the SEC filings. Uh, we're you know we're probably nearing you know we're over ninety, probably nearing a hundred machines under under contract. Um, clients. Uh, depends on how you count them. Um, so in some cases, uh, one brand may have multiple legal organizations. Some might have multiple locations. Some might be considered as one. So it's a little messy, but several dozen is probably the, the safest thing to say um, across numerous verticals. So it could be, you know, financial services like Citizens Bank and, and Bank of Hawaii. It could be healthcare like Dignity Health. Um, let's see who else. Uh, Houston Methodist Hospital. Um, it could be you know corporate campuses like Samsung or, or Merck. Um, uh, law enforcement agencies. Uh, lots of casinos. Lots and lots of casinos. Um, residential, uh, to my surprise, uh, we're starting to make some good traction with. Uh, uh, apartment complexes and, and HOAs uh, and the like. Um, so it's a commercial real estate, you know, that's that's a, a certain. And, and now that we've the offer, uh, we offer the technology, not just 24 seven, 365, but a single double or triple shift uh, to make it easier for some clients. Um, they might need, let's say graveyard shift Monday through Friday, right? But weekends they need 24 seven. Uh, and that can also be super helpful for folks. And now we're starting to, you know, see a slightly different clientele as well. Interesting. Well, yeah, I guess uh, kind of leading this to, you know, you guys have a big announcement today and announced, you know, you 
three more robots. Um, but I think the unique part is it's kind of going to a biotech company. Do you want to chat about how this, you know, kind of deal came up? And also, you know, did you find them? Did they find you? Like, what was the problem they were having or expecting to have? And just kind of how the deal came about and maybe a little bit more details. Uh, we have so many prospects. I'm not in the middle of every single uh, deal. Uh, but I think a couple comments. One, we consistently announce a new client or two or some major material news every single week, like clockwork. Yeah. Um, so we're you know feeling pretty good. We'll we'll be able to uh, to continue that. Uh, so that's healthy. Um, in a lot of cases, we 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 do have another uh, actual biotech uh, client, and sometimes what ends up happening is uh, getting the first ones really hard, and then. You get the next one. Oh, but you know they're using it. Why aren't we using it? And then you know, kind of uh, that started. Same. Uh, our first hospital is really hard. And then the second hospital. Then the third hospital. You know, it gets a lot easier. First casino like was really painful, and now the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So it, it it turns out that you know a lot of folks really because we're at the bleeding edge of technology, and no one's ever done this in the history of mankind. A lot of normal human behavior is I need to see a reference point. I need to see somebody else using this somewhere. Uh, but finally, some people like just stick out their neck and go, Hey, everyone else is using it. Why aren't we? And that's my, you know, especially for fortune, you know, 1000 CEOs, my question is really simple. You tell the world that your people are your most important asset. Okay. Then why aren't you using the most advanced security technology to keep them safe and secure? You know, basic, simple question. And that <laughs> applies to a, a governor, to a mayor, to uh, someone managing um, a public park or a public utility. Uh, it, it's the same question. If your people and your assets are the most important thing for your organization, like why aren't you using the most advanced capabilities that are out there? Yeah, no, it's an interesting question. And uh, you're talking about the domino effect a bunch there with getting new clients. And yeah, I mean, uh, knock on wood, uh, you guys have been crushing it. I'm a new kind of contract that you guys are announcing even sometimes a few times a week. So, you know, knock on wood, that keeps continuing. And yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, you talk, sign a hospital, sign a biotech company, start to see more come down the pipe. Um, this is kind of all I had uh, for the general high level R&D. Do um, you think we missed anything that you want to get in this video? Uh, I, I think we're, I think we're, we're good for now. Perfect. Well, then awesome. Well, then Bill, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for joining. I want to also let people know we are going to do a Q and a video coming up. Please drop your questions below. We'll make sure it tries to get in here, but Bill, thanks so much for joining and look forward to talking to you again soon. Absolutely. And, and, and folks don't forget to go to nightscope.com slash roadshow and you can check out the robots, uh, in person. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of, uh, new dates lined up, so hopefully we'll see you out there. There you go. Awesome. Chat soon. All right. Be good.